Hello and welcome to this little bonus edition of the Secret Cave podcast. It's kind of an extra purely because of its short length, but it's a really cool conversation I had over the phone with David Keir. David's best known in the UK for the comedy character of Charlie Chuck, who saw even greater fame through shows like The Smell of Reeves and Mortimer, on which he played Uncle Peter. His career actually had far grander and more traditional roots than you might think, and it was great to talk to Keir and hear about his earlier days in the business. Since I grew up watching his unhinged performances, it was a true honour to get to speak to him, if only briefly. How are you today, Charlie? <laughs> I'm all right. Good, good. Um, I basically write for a uh, a new online magazine called Secret Cave, and I'm a huge fan of yours, so I just wanted to have a chat all with right. you, basically. Okay, then. Um, yes. What have you chat been up to? to <laughs> Gladly. What have you been up to? Yeah. Well, I've been doing uh, a film for Dominic Blunt. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's part of that I've idea. All right, okay. And what's that film yeah, about, then? Yeah, it's it's called Adult Babies. Adult it's Babies. Any time now. Adult Babies. Is that um, some kind of documentary then, or are you acting in that? No, it, it's a, a horror film. Oh, that's interesting. There's a lot of chuck in it. A lot yeah, of chuck. Yeah, it's interesting with chuck in it, yeah. A lot of your flavours in there then. Ah, uh, well, yeah, I would have said that, yes. That's good it's to know. It's pretty much based on, it's based on facts, really, if you know what I mean. It's based adult on facts. Babies. Well, they actually exist, don't they? The duck babies. People want to be checked like babies. They've got to be somewhere, that's for sure. You know, there was a documentary about it a while back, about a year ago. And are they, you know, what? where does the horror come from? Oh, well, I can't really say too much about it, actually. Oh, but right. If you look it up yourself, if you look up either Dominic, uh, Paddy, I remember the other, or look up a duck babies, and it'll be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I'll have uh, yeah, links I, I, all over the place. I, 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 so I've been, I've been doing that, like, and um, I, um, I did a, um, a commercial for my daughter. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah that was for the daughter's the dentist states. Have you been doing much live work? Um, not really, no. I've been taking a, a rest here. I'm getting older. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. But I'm, no, I'm steady away, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I keep doing doing things, you know. Do you think you could still destroy a drum kit? No, I can still destroy a drum kit, yeah. Is that a yeah. daily occurrence for you? Well, not a daily occurrence. Every now and again. Yeah, that would be costly, <laughs> I guess. It, it, it were costly, yeah. But it, it was all, all worth it, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um... Yeah. Looking back on it all, I mean, how, how do you feel about it, like, retrospectively? Well, it's, it's been a good deal. Yeah, but I've enjoyed myself. I like mean, that. Yeah, you <laughs> certainly have. And, I mean, you've had a, a lot of influence on more generations than you might have thought. Have I? Got... I, I that's, that, that's interesting, then, yeah. I'm only in my no, 20s. So... You're in your 20s now? Yeah. All right, well, I think I cacked it on television in 92, 93. Yeah. With James Whale show. I did eight years with James Whale. And then I did all, all the Sky Star searches, as you know. Yeah, And uh, Vic and Bob. And then I produced and directed The Life of John Laurie up at Edinburgh. I played Scrooge up there. Um, do you know what I mean? So, of course, yeah. You, you've I, actually had the, this really huge career. Yeah, not bad, really. You know, yeah. Uh, I'll say. No, it's not bad at all. So, like, small faces, not that long. Yeah, of course. I, I, I was with Bill Haley. I was interested yeah. to ask about how um, things went down with the small faces because it just it just says whenever I've done my research, uh, including a stint with the small faces. Yeah, well, I toured Scotland with them. I was about nineteen, um, and I was with lots of bands in them days. You know, uh, Alan Price, an amazing dancing bear, and all that. that sounds incorporated. And then I was on with Bill Haley in the Comets at the start of a club in Frankfurt, Germany, when I was 19. Right. So I've, I've been with some, I've, you know, I've run with Ronettes. I've, I've, I've done all that lot in bands, you know, so, over the years, I have to say. So what came first for you then, uh, music or comedy? Well, I've always been a bit nuts, so I'd <laughs> say comedy. But, but in actual fact, it was music. I learned drums when I was 15 off a chap called Bert Pearson. 
Right. Uh, I, I was in the upholstery business when I was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And Bert Pearson had been, had been to America with Fred Carnot's opera, and he went with Charlie Chaplin and Stan Laurel. Right. Before, but when they were relatively unknown. Well, That's it, it didn't back. happen for... Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so it didn't happen for Bert Pearson. And he worked in the canvas room as a pensioner almost. Uh, and they put me with him. And he taught me about platforms and monologues. And he taught me about to get with the cosmopolitan players at the Leeds Civic Theatre. Right. So I did that. And he said, he said, learn to play an instrument, which I did, the drums. So he really set me on the road. So at 15, I was in bands. Well, and I turned professional. At 19, I turned professional. Well, that was probably really important yeah. in uh, building up uh, your abilities to perform. Yeah, well, what, what, what made me turn professional is that we did a gig, the band I was in, Mama's Little Children, mm-hmm. um, but we did a gig at Battersea Park, a News of the World thing, when all the 60s, all the bands like Freddie and the Dreamers and the Foremost and the Mersey Beats and the Searchers, they were all there, and we were relatively unknown. We was on with the Trogs. Right. But the Trogs wasn't... The Trogs wasn't known by then, but they were just an upcoming band like we were. But what happened, there was in three enclosures, but I was in the main enclosure, and I was sat with the carry-on team, and, I, and there was James Mason there, um, the Roger Muller, the Bonanza team, if you ever remember them, mm. off Cartwright and all that lot, um, and pretty things. So I was sat with all these celebrity people, Cheyenne Bodie, and these are going back in the early 60s. Mm-hmm. So, so at that time, I have to tell you, I was a, I was a dustbin man. And I strained myself and I became a road sweeper. Right. And I was picking up dead dogs. Right? So right. if you can imagine me, Monday to Friday, picking up dead dogs with two dustbins yeah. and a transistor radio on my left-hand side and my flask on the other, I went down there on, on Friday night, on Monday... I realised I didn't want to be a dustbin man anymore, and oh, returned yeah. professional. Went straight to Germany, and within three months, I was on with Bill Haley. Right, that, that's, that's fascinating. That's I had no fun. idea that's how it started out for you. That's that's a really yeah. fascinating beginning. Yeah, and from there on in, I, I've been professional all my life. And, yeah, as, and that's how it happened. Has music been in the background for you as you've continued on with comedy then as well? Yeah, well, I learned to, learned to play organ then. So I right. sing along to Or like, you know, old time music or sing along. I did all kinds of things like that. And But because I was in a psychedelic band, that's where the drums came in. Of course, yeah. So, but, so you know? would you say that you had some, like, quite traditional roots then in what you do from the sounds of it? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done all sorts, really. I, 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 went, I did the Montreal Comedy Festival. Really? And... If you want a really good story, yes. But I played a piano, but upside down, it went 30 foot in air. Right. It wasn't, it was, no, no, it, 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 it was for, if you get all this, it was for Franco Dragoni. Franco Dragoni, as David Copperfield, making elephants disappear. Right. So, so there were 11 acts from all over the world, and yeah, these 11 acts, it, it was more like an Andrew Lloyd Webber thing it was massive <laughs> this was for, uh, now what it were what it were the, the president not the president um, <laughs> let me just get it right John Lapionte mm-hmm. is a Canadian senator he was also a pianist and comedian and that routine that I did where the piano goes up in air it was his routine and he was 80 years old and they picked me out to do his routine in Canada. Do you follow me? Yeah, of course. And yeah. I, play, I, I, I play Moonlight Sonata. But I do it similar to drums because if you imagine going up to me, you've got to imagine I'm walking, there was a, a magician called Arthur Brachetti. Mm-hmm. And he's still on go, a French Canadian magician, quick clothes, quick change, man. And he introduced me from off his massive stage, about four stories high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he said, Maestro, Maestro Charlie Chuck. And as I come walking down, I'm snapping at young girls that are in awe of me. And as I approach the piano, I then knock these ducks away, me chuck and me ducks, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And flowers, I knock them out away, and a young girl puts the flowers back up. As I go up to the piano, I do what I do with my drums. 
And so I said, don't start showing me up in front of anybody. <laughs> 5,000 people in there, 5,000 people in the audience. So as I get to sit down, I play in the mood. You know, that da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So I play it, and I do it for about, not long, seconds. And I stand up, and I play Elric Piano. I sit back down, and I go into the happy wonderer. I love to go wondering. <laughs> then I stop again, and I play, say something to the piano again, threatening the piano. <laughs> but, and it was a grand piano. But as I do that next time, the stage then turns around, so a big moon comes out. So Charlie Chuck says to himself, aye, aye, Moonlight Sonata. I then sit down to play Moonlight Sonata, and as I start to play, I sneeze. The shape music goes three quarters across the piano, <laughs> the grand piano. So therefore, that's done by Arthur Brichetti that pulls it on a piece of cotton. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So then, I carry on doing the arpeggio, get on my stool, take my shoes off, lay across the piano, keep playing this arpeggio all the time, hutch it up, hutch the music, so I get hold of it, and then I drop it on the floor, so it drops below the piano stool. I <laughs> then get back down, and I'm still playing 100. I get back down, and I reach over my shoulder to get the music, then I go underneath. So I'm under the piano now, still playing, picking this music up. And as I get it and I put it down again, Arto Bracetti comes up behind me, locks me in with my back on this stool that's attached to the grand piano. And as I sit down, I lock myself in at front. And I start to play Moonlight Sonata. I, I rehearsed it for about three months, climate piano and all this stuff. <laughs> it was pretty strenuous. And I start playing Moonlight Sonata. As I start playing Moonlight Sonata, the piano starts to rise. And it was on a 30-foot cannon <laughs> with hydraulics as big as a kitchen. Do you follow me? Yeah, bloody hell. But you can't, you can't see that. You only see the piano going up. Mm. And as it goes up, it tips upside down because I'm strapped to it. And it lands. And as it lands, I get off my stool like I used to do with my drums and just walk off, not giving a monkey. <laughs> Uh, and that, so that's what I did in Canada. How did that actually go down yeah. then? It, it, it went all right. Yeah, it went all right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, I've that's... just I've heard a lot about uh, British acts like completely bombing at the uh, Montreal Festival. Yeah, but so... if, if you look up, if you look up, uh, if you look up John Lapiante, he's a Canadian senator. Look him up, and you'll see that same routine. Yeah. Know, there's, there's other, they picked me for it and it, it was worth a lot of money no that's awesome that was really mm. impressive that um, you managed to keep that going at Montreal because like as I say I've heard of so many British guys just like not translating over yeah. there so it sounds yeah, like but, you still managed which, to resonate oh yeah that's right I can still do it I mean Chuck's it's visual isn't it and it's not offensive there's no politics no no sexy stuff no it's no. just Tommy, Tommy Cook just daft stuff it, yeah, that's Complete what I mean act. by uh, the traditionalness of it, actually. Now you bring up the visual nature of it. It's like, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You, you can and really see magic, those influences. Yeah. So is that all right for you then? Oh, no, that, that's that's wonderful. If, if that's how just how much you wanted to speak, I, I would speak as long as you wanted yeah. to, really. Uh, no, leave it at that for now, if that's okay. Let's give me yeah, a bit no, of room down anyway. Yeah, no problem. All right, then. It was an old speak to you. As I say, I'm a, re I'm a really big fan. So thank you very much for taking the time. Oh, well, cheers for that, then. Okay.